G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video. Now it's been a while, I've had a bit of a think about what I want this to be and basically I've decided that I'm just going to play games as I normally would and if something good happens, like a good race or a good event, I will then make a video. So pretty much my policy is going to be, you know, sort of whatever makes it to the channel makes it to the channel. Uh, there's no, <laughs> there's no sort of set times for anything, there's no maximum length of time between videos, it's just going to be as it is. So we've had a bit of a break, uh, quite a large one, but we're back. So this was actually a race that I recorded probably four months ago or something. It was when Group 3 Nürburgring 24 Hour was Daily Race C, so we have actually, you know, we saved that footage and we brought you this race because I had quite a good race with this guy ahead of me, Pepe Pepe 17 and you see we go for a nice little move down the inside into turn one, doesn't quite pay off as we skip Mercedes Arena uh, in the Nürburgring 24 hour layout so that leads to a quite tight turn two so actually going for a dive down the inside of turn one isn't quite the right move to do because it usually translates to the outside of turn two which is a lot sharper than turn one would you believe it? So through the course of the Nürburgring 24 hour track we have the nice wide GP circuit before it connects onto the really narrow uh, Nordschleife loop and you see we actually go for a massive dive down to the bottom hairpin of the GP circuit it just breaks way too early whereas I take a nice late braking line and slide down into the apex of that corner you see how much more speed I was able to carry through so that's quite good I've gotten ahead of him before the uh, Nordschleife loop here so that's always good because it's very difficult to overtake through this section uh, through that section rather of this course here now the car I've chosen is actually the Jaguar F-Type it's quite I don't know it's a good car it, I feel like it's got a lot of power, but then um, on the exits of corners, I do feel like it's quite slidey on the exit of corners. I think it's a turbo car. It's um, pretty sure it's turbo, actually. It's not supercharged. It's either it's turbo. I'm pretty sure it's got a turbo in it, so that makes it quite difficult to control on the exit of corners. You can see how tentative I'm being with the throttle here. So um, here we go on the Nordschleife loop now. Massive. 170 turn racetrack this now it's not really that good for racing to be honest because you're stuck behind there's not really any overtaking opportunities throughout the entire course of this Nordschleife loop you're basically waiting for the straight or the GP circuit which has a few overtaking opportunities one of which I took advantage of well that was actually <laughs> mainly because the guy went very very early on the brakes into that corner but we're actually ahead of him. We're just going to maintain the gap, really. There's not really anything we need to do in terms of pulling away because I'm not really going to, no matter how hard I try. Um, but, yeah, so we're just going to keep an eye on that gap. It's in the black box below my flag on the leaderboard in the top left-hand side of the core of the um, screen. This is the word I'm searching for. We're eight-tenths at the moment as we head through Cottonbourne. The very long... It's a straight, but it's essentially a massive curve. The sharpest point of which is right there over a crest, and you'll end up flying into the barrier if you don't lift. I think I even had a little bit of a tap of the brakes there. So we get around Arenberg, that's the right-hander we just went through there, and then we head down through a downhill snaking section up towards the Adenauer Force chicane. So we're gonna head down here, and it's this point here, you see in the bottom right hand. Uh, bottom right hand corner of the screen there I've got the fuel map up now so of course it's race C so there's both fuel wear and uh, <laughs> fuel wear tire wear and fuel use to worry about so we're gonna have to keep an eye on that fuel there because ideally the strategy that you don't want to do a, uh, a pit stop there's absolutely not really anything to be gained from a pit stop really because you know it's quite marginal but I'm pretty sure if you go flat out you'll end up crossing the line to start lap two about 40% of fuel so you're better off saving the extra 10% throughout that first lap and then of course saving the 10% again throughout the second lap to make sure that your one fuel tank from the start lasts all the way to the end of the race because the time loss from fuel saving is much less significant than the time loss uh, from making a pit stop there and then tyres is not really anything to worry about you might suffer a little bit of understeer throughout the second half of the final lap but 
nothing that we can't deal with, especially because all my competitors would be suffering from the same thing if they didn't make that pit stop in the first place. So throughout the course of me just talking about that strategy there, I've actually pulled out a two second gap here, and that of course is outside of the slipstream range. Now as of recording the sound, the commentary here, the um, the slipstream range has actually increased to 1.5 seconds, I'm pretty sure when I recorded this footage it was still the like 0.8 seconds uh, range, so two seconds is well outside of slipstream in this version of the game that I'm playing. Um, of course, two seconds, you only need to catch up barely even half a second and then you start to pick up slipstream again. So, from what is already a very OP slipstream, they've now increased it to massively OP. Now, 1.5 seconds is way too far back to be picking up slipstream. And of course, in real life, slipstream isn't really that important. It's not really a thing. It's not, not nearly as strong as it is in this game. You might make a slight gain, maybe two tenths behind a car. But this, of course, depends on how much aero the car has in real life, I suppose, but um, generally, it's nowhere near as big, and 1.5 seconds is way too big. But we're going to enter the last couple of sectors of like one now. So Pepe Pepe behind is now half a second. He's caught up all that time. That, of course, he was in my slipstream throughout the whole, that big straight, extending from Bergwerk to uh, Clostidol, and of course Clostidol is the right hander before the carousel. So basically through this section here, it's a very fast section, a lot of corners, one after the other, it's basically you're bombarded with corners here, you've really got to know the track, which I don't quite, it's a very hard track to know, I kind of, I can kind of, I know what the corners are once I get to them, but I can't picture myself going through the this last section, the first section I'm okay with, but not this section here, so I've got to be really careful not to make a big mistake, not to, you know, have a massive bin, massive bag of rubbish into the dumpster. Of course, that is a metaphor for my car in the barrier, and Pepe Pepe making his way past, and go way wide going through there. Um, so, <laughs> nearly binned it into the gravel there, and then nearly do the same thing again, very wide. Four tenths or three tenths, under three tenths, two tenths. It's changing as I'm speaking. He's two tenths behind right under my back bumper. And right here, I make a bit of a strategy move. I slow right off, put on the right indicator. There he is. I want him to go past me here. And I've just decided to pause because that goes out my car. So basically, he has no choice to go past me there. But that was because I wanted to be behind before the straight here. Because it's a massive straight. It's a like over two kilometer long straight here at the Nordschleife loop here, so I wanted to be behind, I wanted to be in his slipstream, especially because I was very late to cotton on to the fuel use in this particular race, I was not fuel saving throughout the first probably quarter of the lap, and that really gave me a massive fuel deficit that I had to catch up for the rest of this lap here, so keeping that in mind, I'm probably quicker than this guy, really, but I made a bit of a mistake at the start of the race failing to fuel save, so I had a massive deficit at this point. So that's why I wanted to be behind, because you can basically negate any loss from fuel saving by being in the slipstream of the car ahead. So at this point here, you see going onto the straight, I'll whack it up into fuel map 6. You can see that in the bottom right hand corner of the screen there. Just keep an eye on the fuel, so 54%, 53% now is really what you, what you want to keep your eye on here. You, Ignore laps remaining because that's based on the instantaneous fuel use that you're using at that particular moment. So 52%, I need to be 50% before I get to the finish line. Now it's basically a straight line from here to the end, so I can put it into fuel map 6 and basically not use much fuel at all. But you see coming into the tear garden section, I had that Nissan GTR in my slipstream and made his way past. So I let him go in ahead because I did not want to go side by side through the tear garden chicane there. So that Nissan is very good in a straight line as well, but you see the driver makes a crucial error and decides to go ahead with a pit stop. And you see, they, they only had uh, Sarah Hazy, she only had 42% of fuel remaining, so she only had to save 8%. And you see throughout the course of that straight, being in Pepe Pepe's slipstream, I was able to bring that fuel back to 48 or 49% when I crossed the line, so it was only 1% in deficit as opposed to about probably 10% I was at the point where I started fuel saving. So now I'm basically even with fuel, but I've got to keep up the 
I was going to say keep up the pace of fuel saving. That doesn't really make sense, does it? Keep up the, I guess, just the tactic of fuel saving, I suppose. I'm going to be consistent with that use. So I can't now, because I've gone to the, basically the level where I need to be, I can't now, you know, hammer it because I will then use too much fuel and not make it to the end. And of course, running out of fuel, not ideal, really. You know, that's kind of motorsport 101 there. You do not really want to run out of fuel, especially on the last lap, especially in a good position. As you see, we're right behind Pepe Pepe now. And I, ideally, I want to get ahead of him before the um, launch life loop section is before. As, as explained before, it was. It is very difficult to overtake through there. So ideally, we want to get past him down this straight now. And I don't quite remember what I do here. I'll go to the outside through the kink in the straight now. And of course, he took an inside line, so that brings him to the outside of... Oh, it brings him to the inside of the chicane. Now, I try to outbreak him here, and it's really not on, as he was probably already breaking quite close to the threshold. So that allows him to go ahead, which isn't ideal, but I do have a bit of a gap here, so I can kind of hang back and just keep my eye out for a mistake, or even let him stay ahead throughout the whole lap and then get him on the straight, just provided I stay in slipstream range, of course. If he drives off into the distance, that's my race ruined. But you see that um, strategy, the strategy of allowing him to go ahead before the straight of the previous lap, that was, a, I mean, it was a good idea, you know, because now I have enough fuel to race on my own. So, yeah, <laughs> take that as you will. Was it a dirty move? I don't know. Was it dirty to let him go back ahead on purpose so I could get slipstream and save fuel? Who knows? Argue about it down below. But we'll move on. You see throughout the course of these few corners here, the opening section of the North Shot loop, he's actually gotten out a massive gap, 2.2 seconds. So I've had quite a weak sector here. He's actually doing wheel going up that hill. <laughs> no, that's quite humorous, but um, what was I saying, uh, two seconds ahead, yes, so two seconds ahead, he's not, but like, he's way out of slipstream range, even for the latest version of the game, which wasn't what I was playing here, but anyway, so now I've got to really focus on getting that gap back in, I'm reeling him back in, breaking zone for this corner here, I actually get half a second back in, so that's good, let's see if we can get a good exit here, you can normally climb that curb on the exit there, we get an average exit, probably similar to him. So we're going to head down the hill now, down through the S's, down, plunging down into the lowest part, and then we're going to go up into the Adnell Force chicane, of course, that is preceded by a, a left-hander over a crest that can send you flying into the barrier, and send your dreams of a victory flying into the barrier as well. Take a... I don't know how to take these few... I don't know how to take that chicane now. I take a nice wide entry, but I, I feel like I lose so much time, and I'm not quite sure how to maximize exit speed as it goes into a little bit of a straight here. So I've not really made any gains over the last few corners, which is not not ideal really. I want to be slowly making my way back up because of course I have to feel safe too and of course um, Pepe has to feel safe as well as it's a fuel saving race. Like I said before, you do not want to run out. And you also don't want to go for a pit stop. As you can see actually Sarah Hazy mate came back out of the pits behind me, he's now 10 seconds behind me, she was ahead of me going into the pit, so let's say you, you lose about 10 seconds from taking that pit stop, and I'm not really sure you, you gain 10 seconds by having new tyres as, as opposed to one lap old tyres. So if you look down onto the fuel map now, I've got 25% of fuel remaining, and we are four, nearly four and a half minutes through the lap, so that's not too bad, so my opening lap was in 8.42. And that of course includes the slow off the start time, so that's probably about probably five seconds slower than what we normally can do. Um, so having 25% at around four and a half minutes, that's that's good as well, because you you use less fuel going down that straight as well, because you're not powering out of corners and low gears using high revs. So that's not too bad. We over, from the last couple of corners, we've actually made a couple of mistakes, and the eggs are going very wide onto the eggs and onto the grass. Um, of the, on the exits of corners, so that's not ideal, but then through this section here, just have a look at the gap to, to the leader, 1.7 seconds, it was about 2.4 before, so he's actually going quite, you know, I suppose conservative through this section, but it's probably at this point here where he's realised he's probably not going to make it home on the fuel he has, you can see I've actually, I've got 18%, and I'm putting it up into fuel map 6 at certain points here. And I've actually gained all that time 
through that little section of the track there, so I would say that he's looked at his fuel and go, oh, I'm not going to make this, am I? So he's had to whack it up into fuel map 6. And of course, he doesn't have slipstream of anyone, so he's not able to negate any time loss from fuel saving, so that's why I've been able to gain that time back in, which is good. So this is an example of how the race can come to you. So you let other competitors sort of dictate the race and, you know, take advantage of their mistakes, which in this point, which in this case is uh, Pepe not quite able to, you know, spread the fuel saving across the entire distance of the race, where of course that is obviously how you, you know, maintain the most speed. So this is my weakest section again. Um, so we're going to try and not make a mistake this time, clipping that apex nicely and getting a nice run down that hill into the right hander here up over the crest. We've actually taken quite a nice couple of corners there, not perfect of course, um, but you know we're still in the slipstream, or nearly in the slipstream I suppose, about a second behind, not too bad. So a second behind isn't too bad really because just as long as you get a good exit from whatever that right-handed galgen cop before this straight, you can probably reel in those two tents and then you're in slipstream by then, so it's not too bad. So we're going to see coming through here, down the dip, does Pepe copy my tactics from before, letting me ahead, ideally he would let me ahead, ideally for him rather, he would let me ahead and then slipstream back past me down the straight, but he's not quite doing that, he's, he wants to keep his consistency up, which I can understand, but I'm now half a second behind him, so that's well into slipstream range, and that's probably prime distance for overtaking down that straight, because you want to get a good slingshot pass to avoid them being able to get back past you once you're past. So, going through the Klein's Carousel there, we actually gain, well, actually lose a tenth, really. We're going into Galgenkopf now, so this is a critical corner there. He actually slides in on the entry, so that loses him a bit of time. Um, I'm slower through the mid part of the corner, but you see Pepe goes wide on exit. So he gets a poor exit, whereas I have the good exit, because I, you know, really overslowed the car. and was able to get on the power quite early. You see here, this is another tactical move. I feel like I was too close to get a slingshot there. So I just dipped out of the slipstream, fuel map 6, allowed the car to naturally, you know, slow down, but not lifting, and then all of a sudden, I'll get back into his slipstream and he just lets me back past. Now, I assume that was a bit of a move to be able to get behind me and then slingshot back past. We were only half down, halfway down that straight, but he, ha he actually fails miser miserably at that, if I can get my words out correctly, and he ends up 9 tenths behind. So that's way too far back to be able to overtake, especially now we're coming into the last couple of slow corners before the end of the lap. And you see, I've judged my fuel quite well, 1%. I'm still in fuel map 4, I really could have put it down to fuel map 1, and I'll, I'll flick it up into 6, I don't know why I did that, but anyway, back down to 1, 0%, and we actually crossed the line with a victory there, so I'll take that, that's not bad, really, we had a good little battle throughout the whole duration of that 17, a minute and 16 second uh, race there, throughout Nürburgring Nordschleife, and you see we take a nice little tandem run through turn 1, just before it flicks over to the victory, so there's the Duracell Ultra livery. A Jaguar F type there, which propelled me to victory. Thank you very much to the Jaguar boys back at the factory. But that's going to be the end of this one today. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you can understand how I don't want to force myself to make all of these videos without really getting any views at all. But uh, <laughs> moving on, that that's going to be it. So I do hope you enjoyed. Do hit that like button if you liked it, and do hit subscribe if you would like to see more amazing videos like this in your subscription box every week. But that's going to be it for the video today, and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.